handy rival. He is the best friend to engin any engineer who can't find any friends to play a game with them. So, this game allows anyone to play rock, paper, scissors by themselves against a robotic hand. So I'm going to demonstrate that for us really fast. We have a PIR sensor underneath it, so when it detects motion, if someone's, say, putting on a glove over the top of it, it will turn on the displays and blink these lights to cue the user to choose best of three rounds or best of nine rounds. So I'll go for best of three for time considerations. So I put in my input with the glove, it outputs it to the robotic hand. There's two sounds, one for warming sound, one for losing sound, and LEDs that indicate one. I lose a lot. <laughs> so I chose best of three rounds. The opponent got two victories, so it wins the game. And these LED lights go back to say, you can choose another round, you can play again. Or if we have no motion for 10 seconds, all the displays will turn off. All right, so we used five microcontrollers for this. We used one for each of these. And then we had one to control all the logic, to take the inputs from the push buttons and from the, the glove itself. And then we had two motors, actually, to, one to run the top two fingers, one to run the bottom two. The fingers are um, controlled by two uh, high torque servo motors that are just mounted underneath. Use the uh, random random number generator and the pick basic code uh, to generate a random number, and then based on the number generated, um, we assigned either a rock, paper, or scissors designation to output from the hand. Our power source is a five volt, one amp um, single source AC DC or that we just stole from a phone kit. Um, our sound got amplified with a transistor, and that speaker is mounted right inside there. There's two picks back here that control the LEDs. This one is the main one that takes the input from the button and the glove and sends an output to the, uh, this pick that tells the, the hand to move. So these are the two picks that run the motor. And then the motors are back there, and our motion sensor is right up underneath where the glove would, would be able to move and see the, see the motion. The glove has two magnetic reed switches in it. We chose to use magnetic switch so that with the range of motion, um, people could use different symbols, have like a little bit different on the hands, and still get the same output. So we have one switch right here, and the magnets are right there. One switch right here, and the magnets are right here. So if I had this glove on, if I were to close my fist, this middle or this lower switch would go high. When if I had my hands together and I'm in scissors, so I've got these ones down, these ones separated, neither of the inputs are high, and so it would be a scissor output. So the top two fingers and bottom two fingers are just connected by uh, like fishing line loops on the inside, fishing line on, running along the backs of the fingers as well, and tied it to the other uh, side of the arm on each servo so that as it rotates <coughs> back, it would actually pull the fingers out. We'll play best of nine now, so you guys can see me lose for a little longer. <laughs> <laughs> so that neutral sound means a tie. <laughs>